before we start, I'd just like to thank tonight's video sponsor, Manta. So, rather ironically, I actually tend to miss out on sleep quite a bit, and one way I counteract that is by napping during the day. A nap of around 20 minutes has actually been shown to improve physical performance and cognitive function. Seriously. The problem is, if you're like me, you need darkness to sleep, and it's light during the day. Uh, that's where a Manta sleep mask comes in. This one is mine. It's the original sleep mask. I have one of the Bluetooth headphones and all that kind of fancy stuff, which is great, but this is the one I take with me and use. It's my favorite. It blocks out 100% of light. It's soft, it's breathable. It doesn't put extra pressure on my eyelids like some other masks I've tried. And of course, it's machine washable. Sleep is so important, so don't take yours lightly. Use the code on screen and check out the link in the description to get 10% off Manta products today. Thank you, Manta, for sponsoring tonight's video and I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. Hi. Just pop yourself down. I'll be with you momentarily. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I imagine you've got a rough idea of what we're doing here, but would you like a sort of overview of what we do, how we do it? I can explain the, um, shall we say, non-traditional decor in here. Okay. Well, uh, my official title is I am a personal counsellor specialising in intimacy uh, and functionality in relationships. However, that's a bit of a mouthful, so colloquially, uh, I am a sex therapist. <laughs> now, uh, people have all kinds of misconceptions about um, sex therapy and why it exists. So, you know, we're not here to rake over every little detail and we're not a, a magic pill that's gonna make everything better. What we do is uh, get an overview of your personal health and how that might play into your relationship health. So uh, I'm somewhere between a doctor and a therapist. I like to take a holistic approach rather than separating the two. Um, once we've got to know each other and we've chatted about, you know, your life, your health, uh, you can start to relay some of the problems and I, with my infinite wisdom and experience, will try and help you um, fix them or at least give you some sort of methods and you know things that you can do to help <sighs> sound good okay well as you've probably guessed from the decor um, I'm not particularly interested in doing things by the book it's like this because I mean for a start I like it but also you know, the low lights and the mood and the, sometimes we have candles, we have various, you know, items that one would use in a sexual uh, environment. And it's really just to normalize the stuff we're talking about. Sex is kind of a bit taboo, isn't it? You know, it's not um, dinner conversation, as they say, but here, everything is on the table pun intended. Uh, we can talk about whatever and there's no judgment from me, you know, if you say you're into all kinds of crazy stuff. Honestly, I've heard it all and I can guarantee I've probably heard worse today. So feel free to open up and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to know each other and I think you'll find it easier. Now I should explain. Uh, one of the methods I have implemented quite successfully with patients is um, hypnosis and guided hypnosis. And this is where we uh, relax you and sort of put you under kind of like a trance-like state and you become more susceptible and uh, more willing to sort of take on ideas that you might otherwise not. And really, take them on on a subconscious level so as long as you're open to it at the end we'll probably you know do some guided hypnosis put you under it's sort of like sleep but it's not quite um, 
and that'll introduce, you know, some concepts, some ideas, and hopefully uh, you might start to see some results, and if not, you'll have a very nice relaxing sleep. <laughs> okay. So, as I mentioned, I need to take a holistic approach, and this involves uh, focusing on your health first, you know, just your normal medical health. Um, I've got your records here, your GP sent them over, but I'd like to do your vitals if that's okay. Alright, cool. So I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way. Uh, I'd like to take your heart rate, and I'm going to do this by feeling for a pulse here and then just counting right okay good that's around 70 bpm um next i'd like to listen to your breathing if i could so i just need to grab my uh, stethoscope. Do -do -do. Yes, that's good. All right. So, while I'm listening to your breathing, why don't you tell me a little bit about your uh, recent relationships? How have they gone? Mm. Okay. And, um, sorry, I just need to get into your top, don't worry. It's uh, all above board. <laughs> um, just breathe normally and try and relax. Yes, yeah, so you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And uh, like, was the sex good? Did you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was good at the start, but then it kind of trailed off. Yeah, that's quite a common problem. I'm just going to come out the back one second. Okay, I just need you to hold your breath for a second. Okay. Seems to be fine. Uh, and when you're you know, Vicky being uh, intimate with your partner. Do you find you get really out of breath? Obviously, our heart rates rise while we're having sex, but do you find it to be a, uh, a problem? As in, it's taking you out of the moment, you're noticing it. Like, I, for example, um, while well, my heart rate's okay, I get very, very warm. I mean, I'm a warm person anyway, but. Um, yeah, it's not exactly the sexiest thing in the world to ask to stop and open the windows of a freezing cold apartment in the middle of winter. But um, enough about me. <laughs> We're here to talk about you. Mm. All right, so the uh, relationship, the sex, you said was good at the start and then it sort of became pedestrian, boring, and uh, what about sort of kinks, you know, were you uh, open with your partner, did they know all of the things you were into, or did you sort of keep some back, because it's quite common if, uh, if we're somewhat embarrassed by some of our more um, eccentric or, you know, weird kinks, which, by the way, most people have. Um, some people are very open with their partner, but some people feel that it, you know, makes them vulnerable and they don't tell them. Um, which, in a way, is harmful because once you're with someone and you know you can trust them, then um, being able to be your true self sexually is very important. Mm. And before this relationship, sexually active, you know, were you regularly sort of 
uh, finding partners? Were you with the same person? Were you not really interested? Okay, that's also that's also normal to um, to go through periods with particularly high sex drive and then also low sex drive. It can depend quite a lot on your mood and emotions. Hmm. Okay, so sometimes you get headaches and that can be a distraction. Hmm. Focusing on the wrong type of head, I understand. Are these uh, all over or a particular place? Mm, okay. And do you use um, uh, pharmaceutical aids in the bedroom? Either, either of you. Okay. I'm just going to have a feel around that. My hands are clean, if you don't mind. If I touch you. Just uh, look up if you could. I'm just gonna feel just around here. Mm. And do you feel any pain when I brass here? Or here? Or here? Here. Okay. Um, all right, so. In terms of a solution, um, are you looking to sort of reignite your uh, passion with your partner or are you just looking for a more general sort of boosting confidence in the bedroom okay well obviously uh, ego and um, self-acceptance play a very big part in that so doing things like you know self-care um, looking after yourself getting a new haircut going to the gym um, obviously these are not essential and some people might view them as vanity but if you feel good and you know you look good, um, then you just radiate a different kind of confidence. And I promise you, people pick up on that. I don't know uh, exactly what kind of magic it is, but there is some weird voodoo thing that happens when uh, people are in that middle state between unconfident, that's not attractive, overly confident, arrogant. Some people find that attractive but it's also a turn off. So you want to be around about here. So confident enough to hold the conversation and um, be yourself and sort of exude um, that confidence, but not so much that you think you're God's gift, right? Um, because one of the side effects of life is no matter how good you are in any department, be that sexually or otherwise, there's always somebody better than you better looking, taller, um, more talented, faster, you know, better swimmer, better wrestler, better boxer, better writer, you know, pick your poison. <laughs> well, I mean, you seem very intelligent. You obviously have a great deal of self-awareness to know um, where your problems are and it's my job to kind of address them. But I think for today, we'll try some guided hypnosis and I'll try and take you on a little journey. Um, I'm not gonna prod and poke too much. I'm really just gonna kind of relax you, ask a few questions, you know, try and get just under that surface level. And then we'll put a lid on it and we'll save it for the next session. Uh, one of the key important things is to not go too fast here. If like, on the first session, I'm like rummaging around in your head. Um, then there's probably going to be some resistance that I would have on that. So I'm going to pop this down. Got a little light. 
point here, which I'm going to use um, during this phrase. Is the gel comfortable? Good, okay. I want you to push yourself back into it, you know, allow your body to fill up all the space. Okay. Just looking at your posture. All right. So I want you to just start by closing your eyes. Eyes closed. Eyes and closed. Okay. Now, for this to work, you need to be in a hyper state of relaxedness. Very, very relaxed. And that means that all distractions that on my voice seem to just disappear. So you might get thoughts that pop into your head and I just want you to dismiss them. Now, after we've conducted the first phase of the induction, I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes and then focus on a light, but not yet, can you keep closed? Because the first thing we're going to do is focus on your breathing, okay? So I want you to fill up your lungs nice and full so they're at full capacity. Big deep breath in. Just hold it for a second and then let it out. I want you to breathe in through your nose and then out through your mouth, okay? Now, I want you to keep this cycle going. I want you to become very aware of your weight in the chair feeling heavier and heavier and with every breath that you blow out you're sort of sinking down into the chair more and you can feel your body just becoming limp and relaxed. Very good. How are you feeling? Good. Keep that going. And I want you to imagine a tingling sensation that starts at the back of your head and runs down through your head behind your ears into the back of your neck dissipates out through your shoulders, down into your arms, down through the center of your chest, down into the lower part of your back, and then down out of each leg, and finally out through your feet. And as it leaves your body, the cycle starts again with the tingle from the top, except this time it's even more tingly and it's even more relaxing, okay? Now just hold that very clearly in your mind. I want you to slowly open your eyes, but before you do, I've got a bright light and I'm shining it directly into your eyes. I want you to not focus on anything in your periphery only look at this light. The room, me, I don't exist. My voice and the light, all that matters, okay? So, just get you into focus. Open your eyes. Very good. Now, I want you to slowly watch the light, but don't move your head, okay? It's going to go from side to side, up and down. And everything revolves around this light. I'm going to teach you a concept now called the silent cap. Okay, the silent cap. The silent cap. This was taught to me by a professor uh, in Thailand in a mountain, it was very grandiose. And it was a concept that allowed the, um, the person who was doing it to block out any unwanted thoughts. 
So, obviously, while uh, while awake, while conscious, even in this state, your brain is constantly sending signals, thoughts. Did I leave the washing in the dryer? What am I going to do about work? You know, normal things. And there's no way of permanently stopping these, and you wouldn't want to. But what we're going to do is just open up a little gap. So in a second, I'm going to ask you to just say, stop. Any thoughts that enter your head, I just want you to say, stop. And then you can resume your normal pattern of thinking. Even in this relaxed state, obviously. And should a thought present itself, you're just going to say, stop. That's all you want to do. Just open up a little tiny gap. And you wouldn't believe how beneficial and relaxing that can be. So, just watching the light and any stray thoughts that come into your head we're just going to say stop and busy now you might get it the first time it might take some getting used to but once you can open up just a little bit of a gap it becomes one of the most powerful and relaxing things. Keep watching the light, breathing deeply. And any thought that comes into your head, we're just going to say, stop. Good. We're going to do one last one, and then I am going to put you to sleep. Okay, I'm going to ask you some more questions and we're going to get a bit deeper. Okay. And this is going to be the last time we're just going to say stop. Okay. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes again. in your neck by giving them a bit of a rub. Mm, how does that feel? Good. And I want you to continue your breathing, except now we're feeling really heavy in the seat. Really, really heavy. And that tingling sensation is getting more and more prominent, racing down through your head and into your shoulders and the back of your arms, your back, your chest, your stomach. You're doing really, really well. And I'm going to count backwards from 10. And when I get to zero, you're going to be fast asleep, okay? Ten. Breathing nice and deeply. Nine. Just relaxing and feeling really, really heavy. Eight. Seven. Just continuing to relax. Six. Feeling my hands on the back of your head. Just for a moment. Five, four, three, two, one. Fully relaxed and under the spell. Now, in this state, you're more susceptible and more open. This is your subconscious. I'm going to ask you some questions. 
and you're going to be as honest and open as you possibly can. What is your full name? What is the day, the month and the year that you were born? What are your parents' names? Mm -hmm. What did you want to do when you were growing up? Who was the first person that you found yourself attracted to? What age were you when you lost your virginity? Who was the first person you fell in love with? What was your best sexual experience? <laughs> Very impressive. Wow. How many partners have you had? On a scale of one to 10, how important is physical attraction to you in a relationship? Do you think in the past you have forgiven some people's personality flaws because of the level of physical attraction you had to them? That's not a mistake we're going to make again because there's plenty of attractive people in the world and believe it or not, some of them are really nice. Not only that, but they'll definitely like you. We need to get our confidence up and realize that people view us in a positive way and uh, by projecting the fear of rejection. That is what you may bring into reality unwittingly. What is the longest relationship you had? And how many times a week in that relationship? Did you have sex during the first three months? During the past two months, how many times have you had sex roughly with your partner or ex-partner? Which is more important to you? Um, your own pleasure or giving your partner pleasure. Do you find yourself being the naturally more dominant or submissive um, partner in the bedroom? Which role do you play? Are you afraid that your partner will judge you negatively if you ask them to do, uh, to act out some of your kinks? Do you believe that your partner loves you? Have you acted out or fulfilled their kinks. Okay, well we need to realize that more than likely they will do the same for you in return. Have they ever indicated that they do not like the particular kinks that you are scared to suggest?
I believe that the purpose of these sessions is going to be to give you the confidence and help you come to the realization that you are deserving of being fully fulfilled in the bedroom and that more often than not people especially partners who love you and are committed to you um, are more than happy to fulfill and make you happy especially given that you've made them happy by the sounds of it okay the last thing i want you to do I'm going to give you some tasks to go home and try with your partner. Some of them are quite tame, some of them are romantic, and some of them are a little bit less tame. Okay. This is your homework. I will write them down. And I want you to go through this week and tick them off. Okay. And then when we'll come back for our next session, I'll ask you how they went how you felt about it, and we'll do some more guided hypnosis because I feel like we've got some very honest answers there. So I'm just going to slowly ask you to open your eyes and recap how you go. Just slowly reacclimatize to the world. Welcome back. Sounds rather windy out there, but you've done fantastic today. This has been a very successful session. Okay, well, I will see you on the 19th, should we say seven o'clock evening? Okay. Here are your uh, cards, your list of objectives. I want you to give them a very good go, okay? And let me know how you get on. Well, lovely. It's been very good to meet you, and I think we're going to have a very successful working relationship there. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, that was quite difficult, but...